so thankful this morning because he has given us another chance to come in the house of worship. Amen? Amen. Count it a joy and a blessing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day's journey. Master, we thank you that you woke us up early this morning and you started us on our way. You brought us into the house of worship one more time. We come happy and glad and just so excited about being in the house one more time. We count it a joy. Lord, be with us today. Help us to come before your throne of mercy with our spirits lift high to give you all the praise and the honor for your word, the Lord, to be praised. Everything we do this day be done decently and in order, giving you all the praise. It's in your son Jesus' name that we do pray and give thanks. Amen. We come this morning to give you your Sunday school review and our lesson for this Sunday, September the 19th, 2021, is coming from the book of Mark. And our subject is glorifying God. Um, the printed text is Mark 10 chapter, verses 46 through 52. And our devotional reading is coming from James 5. 13 through 18. I'm going to read the devotional reading because it touched me as we were studying God's Word. And it reads, you can follow along with me if you have your Word. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of our Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has come, committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous man avail it much Elijah was a man with a nature like ours and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months he prayed again and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among you wander from the truth, and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Keep this in memory as we Exalt the word. Our lesson, Mark 10, 46 through 52. And we're talking today about a blind man. A blind man, Bartimaeus. It was so overwhelming when I studied this word because it was during the time of the Passover. And if we can reflect on communion on last Sunday, uh, that the Passover represented something very awesome for the Israelites because it enabled them to reflect back how God had brought them over, putting the blood on the doorposts so that we know that we're covered in the blood of God being able to pass over without dying because God purposed it that way for them. 
So in remembrance of leaving Egypt and going to the new land, they kept the Passover feast, sacrificing of lamb unto God, the blood. Now here it is, the human sacrifice is on the way. And here we see that Mark is talking about this Mark and Luke about this one man. And Matthew talks about two blind men sitting on the side of the road. But uh, the emphasis was put on Barnabas because of what he did. Amen? And in the introduction at the people, places, and times, it said Jericho, a city about 15 miles east from Jerusalem, near the Jordan River. Jericho was the home of a large population of priests who served the temple in Jerusalem. The tax collector Zacchaeus also lived in Jericho. It was the first city Joshua's force destroyed, his forces destroyed that, uh, uh, as they occupied the promised land. Joshua spoke a curse upon anyone who dared to rebuild it. But it was rebuilt anyway. And because, and it became an important trading center. Here it is uh, Jesus leaving Judea, crossing the Jordan River, coming to Jericho, because he got to go to Jerusalem. And everything that Jesus did was purpose. Amen. The blind beggar sitting on the side of the road. Blind beggar, he had some things that was more in tune to what is was happening in his spiritual body, a spiritual sight, a spiritual being, than it was in his natural affliction. Many times we look at the natural affliction, but we don't know what God is doing on the other side. And so we can't look at, and we so busy looking to what we see, but there is something beyond what we see that we sometimes can't comprehend. Even though he was blind, the commentary said that he, 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 he was blind, but guess what? He could hear. He used his ears. He could not see, but he could think. He used his brain because it helped him to realize and to recall Jesus' reputation. All those places Jesus had gone through, he had done some wondrous works. And, and you know, when somebody's doing something, good or bad, it going to get around, amen? The message going to follow. Sometimes it'll get ahead of you. So he had heard about Jesus' reputation. And in hearing God's, Jesus' reputation, he began to devise a plan. He could not see, but he had a voice. And here it is. I remember, and I know about his reputation, but in my affliction, and I know the Passover is on its way, I'm just going to sit in expectation of a move of God. So here it is. This man's faith is being elevated because of what he had heard. He had not seen it. He wasn't a witness. But from what he had heard was enough to cause him to sit in expectation of a move of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So when he heard Jesus approach, uh, he began to cry out. Many times we cry out to the Lord. We cry out in prayer. We cry, cry out in pain. We cry out in sorrow. And we cry out in happiness when we are joyful. Amen? And our cries have different meanings and purposes. Amen? But here it is, this man, when he heard he heard Jesus. He began to cry out. And when you cry unto the Lord, he said, he will aid your every need. Amen? He said, seeking ye shall find, knocking the door shall open. Here it is. Jesus stood still when he heard the cry, get intense. 
And then the crowd began to tell him to shut up. Every time Jesus show up, the devil show up too. Sometimes our character, our attitude, and our positions that we feel that we're in the right position, and at times we don't realize how off we are from being in the right place. Sometimes it, you need to speak up. Amen? And then all of us are different. Uh, we're different people. You may praise one way, I may praise another way, and somebody else may praise an another way. You may sit quietly, you may holler. I remember when we used to tear up Roxanna. The choir was 50-some deep at one time, Brother McCall recall. And we were tearing up them chairs back then. And Deacon De Felder said, y'all keep tearing up them chairs, you're going to pay for them. Amen? And I, re I recall that, you know. And I mean, every Sunday we tore up the church. But the thing that made it so awesome was that we didn't stay the same. In our praise, we began to understand there was a shifting. And we want the same person or people we were after we have sh shook it off or praised God in a mighty way. Things change. Our attitude changed. Our character changed. I remember so many preachers came out of that ministry. So many deacons came out. So many lay people came out because we weren't the same anymore. Amen? And here it is when we look at uh, when Jesus stood still, the crowd said, shut up. The man kept hollering. I, I, that's why, you know, even sometimes I sit quietly, but I'm hollering because I know what I need to do to shake off what I need to shake off. Amen? And, and when, 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 when they realized that Jesus had stopped, and then Jesus bid the man to come to him, the, 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 look at the, uh, the position of the, the, the crowd, how they shift their attitude. They wanted to encourage the man then to go to Jesus. But immediately when he heard Jesus' voice, he shook off his garment. Some of us need to shake off some stuff. Right. So, you know, he shook off the sickness because he, would be, he was able to say, Thy son of David. He acknowledged uh, Jesus as being the son of David. Then he said, Rabbi. He, in other words, he was saying, Master, Messiah, Teacher. He recognized who Jesus really was. And, and because... When Jesus called him, he was able to shake off his garment. He shook off his sickness. By faith, he reacted and responded to the voice of God. Amen? And, and, and when we have the word of God, we need to do something and show an acknowledgement that God has touched us in some kind of way. Amen? I, 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 I don't get upset when folk don't move or say nothing. It's fine. Because when you do it, make sure it's real. If you're going to praise the Lord, praise him for real. And then afterwards, let's see some good fruit. That what James was saying. The, the fruit should follow what you do. Amen? Because his fruit followed him. He got up, he shook it off, and he ran to the Lord. And Jesus said, what would you have me to do for you? Mm, and immediately. He said, I want my sight. And Jesus said, you have already healed. His faith had healed him. When we speak the word of God, when we live the word of God, when we trust the word of God, number one, he heard, he believed, he received, he accepted, and then he went to the Lord and he was healed. But he was already healed because of his faith. Jesus spoke to him and said, your, you have your healing. You have been made not just healed, but whole. Salvation came to that man that day. We see faith in motion. We see him glorifying the, God, the Lord. But we also see salvation being extended to that man. Amen? Brian Bonner made him say he understood what God had handed him up gave to him and 
when Jesus said, now go your way. Isn't that amazing? You, you healed, now go on your way. Uh, but the man decided, no, I'm going to follow Jesus. Uh, we, we, we said, we, we, we follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. But we need to examine ourselves. Because there are some areas where we keep turning back. We keep turning back. I, 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 I love when the man, he began to say, Lord, thy son of David, Messiah, teacher, oh, master. Rabbi mean teacher, master. Son of David mean Messiah. Jeremiah talked about the coming Messiah. This young man had all this in his heart. And he released it out of his mouth. And he was healed that very hour. How many of us still looking for God's mercy and his grace every day? It's the grace of God that keeps us. He believed, he heard, he acted, he received, and then he followed. It is amazing at times when we realize if we do an examination of ourselves that we fail to even offer Christ anymore. We used to ask, will you accept Jesus as your Savior? We don't do it anymore like we should. We don't, would you like for me to pray for you today? We don't do it anymore. The effectual fervent prayers of the elders in the church. If you have any illness, go to the church. And they will pray and anoint you. We don't do that anymore. The mandate of God hadn't changed. It's still the same. What we have to do is get more familiar with Jesus. Not talk about what we know, but act in accordance to what we know. And watch God blow our minds. Because Jesus is our high priest. He is the Lamb of God. He is our peace. He is our just judge. He is faithful. He is holy. He is our doctor. He is our healer. He is everything we need. That's why we come into the house on Sunday mon mon morning to worship. Because we know who we come into. Amen. I, I, I feel good coming in the house of the Lord because I love to look upon your faces. I love to fellowship with my sisters and brothers. And I know we draw strength from one another. He said, we're two or three gathered in my name. Touch and agree. <coughs> he will be in the midst. Let us draw more closer to God and one another. Amen? Because the season is changing. And time is running out. Amen? To God be the glory. Let the church say amen again. I want to thank Mr. Bennett. Amen for that spiritual overview of the Sunday school lesson. Amen. You. you know, sometimes when we come in the house on, on Sunday morning, you have to be pumped and primed. Amen, somebody. Oh, amen. You know, it's a little inclement on the outside. It's been raining all week long, so some of our hearts might be a little down, but uh, I want to encourage you to realize that God is still God. Amen. And we came in here to praise him, amen, and give him all the honor and, and, and to glorify him for what he's done for us. Y'all ain't got to say nothing, amen. Amen, I feel so good to be in the house of the Lord. 
this morning, amen, as we call to worship at this church, the Big Rock Sound of Missionary Baptist Church, where none other than Pastor Henry C. Davis is our pastor, we call to worship this morning on this Sunday of this great year, amen. I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be here, amen. Amen. Now, on last week, I was out of town, and I was traveling. Amen. And every now and then, you need to have an opportunity to just to have some downtime or some mean time. Amen. And my wife was in, in some meetings in a conference, and, and, and I decided to go with her because while I was there, it gave me a chance to walk. I wasn't in the meeting. She was in the meeting. So all day, every day, all I had was some mean time. Amen. So I spent the whole day. Some days, I would take off walking and see if I could walk in one direction as far as I could go till I couldn't even see where the conference or the hotel area was. Amen. Why are you doing this, Reverend? Because I wanted to test my own physical strength. Amen. Amen. You, you know, it, we live in a strange time right now. I want to try to preach the spirit a little bit so you can understand that you need to flip what you see and, 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 and what you understand and start seeing things that you don't see. Amen. Amen. Ain't it funny that we in a COVID virus, amen, and, and, and I love football, Deacon Gray, and I, and I love to go to the games, and I love to watch the games, and I was watching uh, football games on yesterday. Do you not know that all football stadiums are full, amen? Y'all yeah. ain't got to say nothing. Y'all don't want to work with me this morning, amen, somebody. What you trying to say, Reverend? They're full because folk want to see football, Amen. And they don't mind paying to go in there. They didn't go in there for free. Amen. They paid between 50, 60, and some $100 to see a football game to sit right next, shoulder to shoulder, somebody during a time of a pandemic, over 70 and 80,000 folks in a stadium. Where are you going with that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Amen. Where I'm trying to tell you, you got to learn to think for yourself. See, we do what we want to do. Amen. The Sunday school lesson say glorifying God. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus, amen. He had heard about the Lord. Amen. Amen. Even though he was blind, he still could hear. Amen. And he had heard about how good God was. Amen. He had heard about the thing that Jesus did. Amen. Giving sight to the blind. He had heard about him uh, uh, healing a woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. He had heard about it. So when he heard the voice of the Lord on the way, he said, My son, thy son of David, have mercy on me. What you saying, Reverend? I'm trying to tell you why you live and yet live, and you're still alive. And if you don't think you are, then you need to go on over there to the funeral home and get in one of those caskets. Amen. I think still breath is in your body, and while breath is still in your body, you need to praise the Lord. I don't care how you feel about it. I don't care how you feel about it. I came down here to praise the Lord. Amen. My wife would come out of her meetings around 12 o'clock just for a lunch break, and she said, where you been? I said, I've been walking. She said, how far you walk? I said, I walked out about three or four miles and turned around and walked back. Amen. And I said, one time I didn't know if I was going to be able to make it back. Amen. She said, why do you do these things? I said, because I want to talk to the Lord. Amen. I want to thank him for allowing me to still be here. I want to thank him for uh, covering me during this pandemic. Amen. I want to thank him for giving me some common sense. Amen. Somebody, y'all didn't hear what I just said. I want to thank him for giving me some common sense. Amen. There's an old saying we used to say, preachers uh, uh, would say sometime in the church, we say we, we go to school and we get all this education, we get a million dollars worth of education and don't have nothing but a nickel worth of sense. Amen. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. I'm, 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 I'm going to let you know what's going on today. I thank God I was excited to get back here. Amen. To be in fellowship with you and my pastor. Amen. We act like, uh, what, what, you wait, what you waiting on for, for somebody to tell you your time is up? I'm not going to wait on that. I'm not going to wait on that. The Bible says you ought to be in the vineyard. Amen. Folk talking about this end time. I don't know what time it is, but the Bible that I read said, let the wheat and the tag grow together. And at his appointed time, he'll do the separation. So I'm going to stay on the, on the wall, amen. I'm going to go to the games. I'm going to enjoy them, amen. And I'm going to praise the Lord, amen. When I wake up in the morning, I'm going to praise him. When I go to bed at night, I'm going to praise him. 
Sunday morning come, I'm going to come out to the Big Rock Center Missionary Baptist Church, and I'm going to praise the Lord. So we here. Hmm? So we here on this Sunday. Amen. Psalms 24 said, the earth is the Lord, in the fullness thereof. The Lord and they that dwell it therein. I believe that. Do you believe that? Yeah, Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I believe that. Yeah, Amen. You know, sometimes things don't be the way we want them to be, and I understand that too. Yeah, Amen. Yeah, Amen. I, I, I try to keep my mother's yard clean and cut and looking good, and, and, and it's been raining so much, and I've been out of town, and she wanted me to cut the yard. Yeah, Amen. And I got back into Montgomery, and she wanted me to cut the yard. I know I went by there, and it was all high-grown. And I told her, I said, Mama, I'm going to tell you something. I said, you already know this, but I got to share it with you. I said, sometimes you got to wait. You got to wait on God to allow you to do certain things. She said, I knew it. And I said, I'm going to share it with you. I said, if I cut your grass right now, it's all wet. Amen. Everything going to be a hot mess. Amen. But if we just have patience and wait on the Lord. Amen. Do you not know obedience is better than sacrifice? I'm going to give you an example of this morning. Corey, obedience is better than sacrifice. Ain't nothing you did, amen. But by staying on the wall, God will bless you, amen. It ain't nothing that the church did, so obedience is better than sacrifice. It ain't nothing that the choir has done, but obedience is better than sacrifice. And I'm excited to hear what thus said the Lord so I call to worship this morning at this great church whom I've had the opportunity to, to grow up in as a child. I call to worship this morning at the Big Rock Santa Missionary Baptist Church. I was glad when they said unto me, I'm excited to hear what pastor has to say. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. After you have heard two songs by our choir, amen, our, our, our praise team, amen. The next voice you'll hear will be none other than our pastor, Pastor Henry C. Davis, Jr. May the Lord bless you and keep you is our prayer, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God, for the Thank you. those that are out there in virtual world from yes. being with us this morning. Yes. Roxana, come on and help us worship. This morning when I rose, yes, I didn't have no doubt. Yes, this morning when I rose, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Church, this morning when I rose, yes, I didn't have no doubt. I knew the Lord would take care. Yeah. 
Father God, I don't care what you're going through. Yes, yes. This is not a time to be down the Lord. Yes. Glory to God. When it seems like that the doors of progress have closed in your face. And no matter oh, yeah. what you do, your friends don't appreciate. All you have to do is just steal away and go down. down on your knees. Tell God, tell God, have mercy, please. You ought to tell him, come on. Come on, Jesus. Come on. Come on, Jesus. I need you to come on. Since I started this Christian journey, church, I found out Jesus is my only friend. So what I had to do is just steal away and go down. Since I started this Christian journey, church, I found out Jesus is my only friend. So what I had to do is just steal away and go down. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. Keep turning me up. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen this morning. Amen. It's, it's, it's good to be here. Amen. I, I thank God for another day. Amen. I thank God for another day. 
I, I wonder, in the midst of all that's going on, have we really taken time to evaluate where we are with God? I, I know it's drizzling outside, rain's been here all week. Uh, Reverend Robinson reminded you that rain won't stop you. You got to keep going, amen. And, and this morning, I'm excited because he still lives. Yeah, yeah, he, he still lives. Jesus lives, amen. And if you made it to the house of the Lord, you ought to say so, amen. Amen. He'll come see about you. And that's that's an old number, but it's still good today. So many people are going through things and, and, and dealing with things in their life. And, and yet, they have a faith that tells them the Lord will still come by and see about them. Amen. Amen. And as we go forward this morning, there is a word from the Lord, a challenging word, amen. And I'm not going to hold you long, but we're going to bless the Lord in this place because he's been too good to us. He's really been too good to us, amen. To those that have joined in with us virtually this morning, it's good to have you viewing us. Uh, as I've started to remind you, the doors of the church are open. I'd like to see your face. Amen. Um, I know virtual is convenient, but the Lord didn't call for us to be convenient. Yeah, he says, forsake not the gathering of the saints. Amen. So as, as we prepare to hear from the Lord, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you this morning for today Lord God and things being as well as they are now Lord as your man servant I turn it all over to you Lord take control now just use me as you see fit to feed these your people now you hallow the word that's been penned this morning and Lord God you take it and you make it holy Lord God, let it be a seed planted in good soil for the furtherance of your kingdom. Have your way in this place. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And for his sake, amen. Amen. I, I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt this morning that we all have a choice to make. And the Lord convicted me. He convicted me because I wanted to make choices for people. But he told me and made it very clear we all have a choice to make. And I'm saying that this morning because it comes down to a choice. And if we're selfish, we'll make the wrong choice. But I, I came this morning to kind of broaden your horizons and, and to prick your consciousness to get you to a place where you'll think about the choices you make when it comes to serving the Lord. If you have your Bibles or your electronic instrument, however you may uh, get to the scripture, I want to go over to the book of Matthew chapter 27. I want to lift three verses there this morning for the edification of our souls. Matthew 27. Amen. Going over to verse number 27. When you get there, say amen, and I'll know you're with me. Amen. Matthew 27, verse starting at verse 27. A word from God for 
God's people. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into Paradium and gathered the whole garrison around him, that being the army. And they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. You may be seated. This morning, just for a few moments, I want you to bear with me. I, I, I want to take this subject. Will we crown him with thorns again? Will we crown him with thorns again? As we come to the text, what a decision Pilate made. He had to judge the judge of all earth. He had to decide bec between Christ and the crowd. And here we are today. And we must each do the same thing. Who are we going to choose, Christ or the crowd? Will we crown him with thorns again? And, and Pilate offered the crowd Jesus or Barabbas, the master or the murderer. And Jesus took Barabbas' place. I believe everybody here this morning knows the story. Jesus took Barabbas' place. Not only did he take his place, he took your place. Not only did he take your place, he took my place. The whipping, the marking, and the crown of thorns, they were all for us. I wonder, will we crown him with thorns again? Three things from the text that I want to bring to your attention this morning as you face the choice that you have to make. The first thing is they placed a crown on Jesus, but they did not make him their king. You didn't hear me. They placed a crown on Jesus, but they did not make him their king. The soldiers dressed Jesus as a king, they put him in a scarlet robe and a crown of thorns upon his head, but they were only pretending. I wonder how many of us are just pretending today in the body of Christ. We, we are dressing up to serve the Lord, but I wonder how many of us really are serving him. Are we only pretending? Many pretended that Jesus is their king. He seems to be the king at church, but not at home. He seems to be the king before believers, but not at work. I wonder how many of us today are making him king in the sanctuary. But when we get in the streets, he's not the king anymore. I wonder how many of us have decided that we're going to crown him with a crown of thorns again. Yeah. The crown of thorns hurt Jesus. It brought blood from his brow. When we only pretend we hurt our Lord and Savior, Jesus, we really need to make him king of our life. Yeah, they placed a crown upon Jesus, but they did not make him their king. See, a lot of us today are doing the same thing. We, we've crowned him, but we hadn't made him the king. It was superficial. It was just for show. Minister Benny, we did it because everybody else was doing it, but we didn't have it in our hearts that we loved the Lord. 
The second thing, they praised him, but they did not mean it. They praised him, but they did not mean it. The text says, Hail, King of the Jews. These were words of praise, but they were mocking him with mocking words. Many say things about Jesus that they don't mean. Oh, you didn't hear that. Many say things about Jesus, but they don't mean it. Many sing songs, but they are lies. Many make com comments, but never carry them out. Many make testimonies, but they don't ring out loud. Jesus deserves our total dedication. We need to give him our lives without reservation. Or are we crowning him with thorns again? Here it is. In the text, they praised him by saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They, they were recognizing him to be a king, but yet in their hearts, they didn't care for him. Because if they cared, they wouldn't have never changed places with Barabbas. They would have brought Barabbas forth rather than Jesus. We know the tradition of the time that once a year a criminal could be set free. But Jesus hadn't even been convicted. But yet he was seen as a criminal. Y'all don't even understand. Yeah, many were saying things about Jesus, but they didn't mean it. See, and that's the problem today in the church. A lot of folks saying stuff about Jesus, but they don't mean it. See, he's good in a crisis. He's good when your back is up against the wall, but, but when things are going well and the sun is shining in your life and, and everything seems like it's all right, everything's good with your children and, and nobody's hurting or in pain, then you, you find yourself in a place where it's easy not to mention his name. But if he's real in your life, then the things that you say about Jesus, you'll mean it. Yeah, singing songs that turn into lies. We all can sing gospel songs. We can all sing the old standards, but do they ring true in your life? When, when we say that he's our way out of no way, are we just saying empty words? When, when we say amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I wonder, do we really realize how amazing his grace truly is? Are we just going through the motions? When we talk about his blessed assurance, I wonder how many of you are truly blessed. Yeah, we make comments, but we never carry them out. We say what we're going to do in the name of Jesus. But for some reason, sometimes things never get done. Yeah, they praised him, but they didn't mean it. Third and, and finally, from the text, they knelt as if to worship Jesus. But it was all for show. They knelt as to worship Jesus. But it was all for show. How deeply his heart must have been hurt and grieved to see people bowing at him who had no intent of worshiping him. See, worship goes farther than what you do on Sunday morning. Your worship context, it context, it takes on the whole context of your life. If I see you on Monday, are you living a life of worship? Are the things you're doing glorifying God without you even saying it? In the text, they knelt down after saying, Hail, King of the Jews, as to worship him. 
but it was all for sure. They were actually mocking him. And I wonder how many of you know today to come and feel the sanctuary, to view virtually, but your life never changed. I wonder how many of you know today that all you doing is mocking him. Yeah, it's all for show. Yeah. And bowing, they were just going through empty motions. Hmm. They hit him with the reed. They spat on him. Then they nailed him to a cross. Yeah, they were bowing, but in their bowing, they were just going through empty motions. Motions. I wonder how many of us just going through empty motions in the body of Christ today. We're bowing on Sunday, but Monday takes on a new context. It's doggy dog, and we are doing whatever we need to do in the world to survive. Jesus doesn't ever cross our mind. They wounded him and now pretended to worship him. I wonder how many times have we hurt the Lord and come in on Sunday morning and then want to pretend to worship him. That's why I don't get excited about how many folks show up on church on Sunday because I know everybody that shows up ain't worshiping him. Uh, this morning I heard them talking about the number of folks in football stadiums and I said it last week. It's amazing how hundreds of thousands of folks sit elbow to elbow with no mask on in the midst of the pandemic. But here it is on Sunday morning. We can't get back to where we used to come into church and fill the place with a praise because we worrying about catching a virus. Yeah. I wonder how many times have we wounded him when we show up raising up holy hands and the week before, we hadn't been anywhere near holy. Oh, I wish I could talk about it this morning. See, there's a problem when the church doesn't recognize that our emotion and our actions represent who we really are. I don't have to open my mouth to praise him. I can live a life of praise. If I can help somebody along the way, then my living shall not be in vain. One of the biggest praises you can ever give God is just to live a life of praise, that I'm going to let everything that I do glorify God. I'm going to let everything that comes from my mouth glorify God. I'm just going to live my praise out in front of folks. I don't have to explain to you that I met this man named Jesus. You ought to see it in my actions. Every time I step out of my front door, something ought to tell you that I have a relationship with this man named Jesus. They knelt as if to worship Jesus, but it was all for show. And so it is today with many people, too many theatrics, too little theology. Y'all didn't hear me. Too many theatrics, not enough theology. The problem is when the sanctuary becomes a center for entertainment. When the pulpit becomes a stage, and the only reason we are there is in the, to entertain folk, they could pay the price of admission and come in and see a good show. Yeah, too many theatrics. I don't have to act when I come to worship. All I have to do is think about how good God has been to me. I don't need a crowd to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. All I need to do is think about yesterday when he woke me up and I was still in my right mind. All I have to do is think about this morning. When I put my feet on the floor and I was still able to take a few steps. When I think about I could clothe 
expose myself today. And I made my way to the house of the Lord. It doesn't take much to get me to worship the Lord. Too many theatrics and not enough theology. Too many churches today have decided they'd rather perform and make sin accommodated rather than trying to wipe it out. I stop by to tell somebody today, we don't have to accommodate sin. Because if we accommodate sin, we are no better than the sinners that are trapped in it. But I stop by to tell you, he's still saved. See, you need to know that for yourself today. He still saves. But will we crown him with thorns again? Yeah, Jesus deserves worship. From a heart that's filled with love and nothing less. Yeah, will we crown him with thorns again? They placed him, they placed a crown upon Jesus' head, but they didn't make him their king. They praised him, but they did not mean it. And finally, they knelt down as if to worship him. But it was all for show. The church is in trouble today. In 2021. Because our worship ought to be real. The church is in trouble. Because we got to make a choice today. Whether we are going to crown him with a golden crown. Or are we going to crown him with a crown of thorns. The church is in trouble today because we have a choice to make. You see, the crown of thorns was not for him. He wore it for us. We're going to make him wear it all over again. Every time we transgress, every time we missed and mistreat our fellow man, we're making him wear that crown of thorns all over again. Every time we violate his word, every time we take actions against other folk who are not Christ-like, we, we're making him wear the crown all over again. Every time we sing empty songs, every time we pray, empty prayers and it's all for show we are crowning him with a crown of thorns all over again oh I wish somebody heard me this morning we ought to crown him to be the king but let him be king and lord of your life let him be savior in your life the crown of thorns wasn't for him, it was for us. He's worn it once, but does he have to wear it all over again? I wish I had some help in here today. There ought to be a praise in here. Because you ought to think about just for five minutes what the Lord has already done for you. You ought to think about how far he's brought you. Somebody here ought to think about what he's brought you through. Oh, I didn't mean to rock the boat this morning. Then there ought to be somebody here willing to stand this morning and think about what he's bringing you through. Not what he's brought you through, but what he's bringing you through. And, and your praise ought to be real because he's the king of kings, the lord of lords. He's my hope for tomorrow. He's my everything. I dare I crown him with a crown of thorns when he's worthy to wear a crown of gold. How dare do I mistrust him or mistreat him when he died for me? I wish I had some help in here. He died for me. He laid down his life one Friday for me. 
But I'm glad that's not how the story ends. Are we going to crown him with the crown of thorns again? Or are we going to celebrate the fact that he got up one Sunday morning, that he rose, he rose, he rose with all power in his hands. Will we crown him with the crown of thorns again? Or we allow him to be Lord and Savior of our lives. Will there be a great celebration in the sanctuary today for what God has already done for you? He died for each one of us. He died so we could live. I wonder, do you understand that today? In his laying down, we were able to get up. Oh, I wonder if you understood that today. How often do we take it for granted that he took our place on an old rugged cross in a place called Calvary, that he died to death for a price that we couldn't pay. But I'm glad this morning that I have a savior that lives. I, he lives. And I'm glad this morning that I let my worship be real. No, I'm not perfect. No, I hadn't always gotten it right. But I still hold on to his unchanging hand. And when I need him, I can call on him, and he'll come see about me. I wonder if anybody here this morning know that he's able to come and see about you. He'll show up late in the midnight hour. Do you hear me, Priscilla? He'll wipe your tears away. Calm all your fears. Can you call on him when you need him? Big Daddy knows what you're talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm excited about. How dare we try to make him wear a crown of thorns all over again. When he's done nothing but been good. He's been better than good. He's been great in our lives. Somebody ought to praise him this morning for what he's done for you. You ought to tell him thank you in this place for what he's done for you. He's an awesome God. Yes, he is. And he's working it all out. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He's working it all out. Whether you believe it or not, hold on to your hope. Hold on just a little while longer. Don't give up in the battle. Stay in the fight and victory shall be yours. Yeah, he's able. He's able. Somebody needs to hear that today. He's able. Whether you're viewing virtually or here in this sanctuary, you need to know God is able. Mm. Oh, God, I feel my help. And I know we got to go, but I just want to praise him while I still got time. I don't know how much sand is left in the hourglass. But while I still got time, I just want to tell him thank you for all he's done for me. Oh, bless his holy name. He's worthy. Oh, he's so worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, he's good. My, 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 my. We thank you, Lord.
They may have mocked him, but I'm going to worship him. Yeah, I'm just going to worship him while I still have time. God bless you and keep you this morning. That's my prayer. That something has been said that you can hold on to today. And if you're viewing us virtually, you have a choice to make. Are you going to worship him for real? Or are you going to crown him with a crown of thorns all over again? Let your worship be real. Let it be real. Whatever you do for the Lord, let it be real. I'm not worried about what other folks think. I'm, I'm not worried about what other folks may say. But let your worship, let it be real. Oh, God. And I promise you, if your worship is real, something will move on the inside that will make you act up on the outside. Jeremiah says, like fire, shut up in my bones. Oh, God, I promise you it's real. And you need to make the choice today. For the Lord is available. And he says, all you have to do is believe. And if maybe you hadn't confessed him as your Lord and Savior. But the word of God tells us that if we believe in our heart, that Jesus lived, died, and rose again. We too shall be saved. I offer Christ to you. Because somebody needs to choose him today. Somebody needs to choose him today. Will you serve him? Or will you mock him? Somebody needs to make a choice today. Will you allow your worship to be real rather than for show? He's available. I thank God for you this morning. I hope you heard something in the message this morning that will bless your life. God is more than able. He's more than able. See, too often, we take for granted how good God has been. We always looking for the next big blessing. But we discount the small blessings. If you can wave your hand this morning, if, if you can open your eyes and still see You've been blessed. And even if you got a little few aches and pains, you're not tied to your bed this morning. You've been blessed. We take the little things for granted. When it doesn't look like you're going to make it. But some kind of way, he gets the bills paid. I, I, I don't hear nobody. Some kind of way, he gets the bills paid. He still put food on your table. You've been blessed. Yeah. It's a choice to make. And I hope somebody makes the choice this morning. Choose Jesus and let your worship be real. God bless you and keep you today. God bless you. Will we crown him with a crown of thorns again? I hope your answer is no. I hope you'll take the position Every day that I live, I'm going to live for Jesus. Y'all don't hear nothing. 
I'm just going to live my life for Jesus. He's worthy. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this place. He's worthy. I thank him for the word this morning. The world is going to hell in a handbasket because folk won't make a choice. We, we, we don't want to serve him all day, every day. We want to serve him when it's convenient. It's not going to work. Mr. Fuller, I know it's not going to work. It's a choice to make. Too many folk are playing with Jesus. Yeah, too many folk are playing with the Lord. But let our worship be real. He says the only way you can worship me is in spirit and in truth. And in order to do that, you got to take a self-examination. You got to look at who you are. We're all sinners, but we are saved by grace. We are capable of the same things that we accuse other folk of. We are capable of it, but we are just saved by grace. And I thank God for grace. Because when I wake up some mornings and, and I have some stuff on my mind, but when I step in his grace, his grace takes over my mind. And the things that I thought about, I don't carry out because I stepped in his grace. I'm still a self. Just say by grace. It doesn't take long to mess this life up if the enemy gets to your mind. It won't take long for you to make a decision that you can't recover from if the enemy gets in your mind. Doesn't take long at all. We're seeing it every day on the news. Folk are taking other folks' lives for little or no reason at all because the enemy is speaking to their mind. But I thank God for his grace. Hmm. It's a choice. It's a choice to stand in his grace. Oh, bless the Lord in this place. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. Because the Lord is worthy. Amen. Amen. As, as we're preparing to get ready to go this morning, I want the church to continue to be in prayer for our sick and shut in and our families that are dealing with with bereavement. I, I want you to keep Sister Lizzie Smith, Sister Alberta Jackson, and Sister Jesse Thomas in your prayers as they're dealing with the loss of their father. And it doesn't matter. The Bible says, honor your father and mother. But we want to keep them in prayer because we are family. Let them know that we love them. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to pray uh, this morning for Sister Angela Robinson in the loss of her father. Let's continue to pray. We're a family. Reach out and touch them and let them know that you love them. Amen. We, we want to pray for Sister Helen Gray and James as they deal with Helen's loss of her brother. You never know when the Lord is going to call. But we need to keep our family members lifted in prayer. And to you that are viewing virtually, I keep reminding you that we are here because pastor needs to see you in the midst of this pandemic. I want to be able to look in your face. And be able to tell you how much the Lord loves you. 
We are here. But if this weekend was evident of how people feel about what they do, they showed it. It's hard for me to understand how you will throw your life in the balance to be in attendance, to be entertained. But you won't take a chance on Jesus to come to worship. If I got to get it, let me get it trying to serve the Lord. Because if I'm trying to serve him, just like blind Bartimaeus, he'll hear my cry. If I call on him in the middle of my weakness, somebody ought to help me here. I'm about to get going again. He'll hear my cry. Yeah. But we doing everything but trying to serve the Lord. I'm not fussing. I'm just telling you the truth. We doing a lot of stuff other than trying to serve the Lord. I think back on it now and trying to accommodate us as a church family and taking virtual and putting it in place so you could have it during the pandemic. But it looks like now it's coming back to bite me because folk done found it to be too accommodating. The Bible says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. It should be holy unto the Lord. It's still the Lord's day. I don't care what you got going on. You ought to be able to give the Lord an hour of your day. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We might have to go to blackout to get some folk attention. To let them know God has a way. Yeah. Don't get so carried away in doing your thing that you forget about him. Mm, God bless you this morning. We about to go. Amen. But let's continue to pray for our church family, our family members. Then let's pray for this world that we live in. We're in some strange times. And some folk are doing some strange stuff. But our God is not strange at all. We're going to serve him. Amen. Amen. As we go today... Uh, the basket is there for your gifts as, as you depart. We're still social distancing those things in place. If you roll together, you can sit together. Amen. Uh, you're masked up and, and you've had your shots and you're being obedient. I thank God for your obedience. Amen. And let's encourage others to be obedient. But more than that, I need your help encouraging other folk to understand it's still the Lord's Day on Sunday. Virtual is good when you can't get here for a legitimate reason. But don't use virtual as an excuse not to come to corporate worship. The Bible mandates it. It's a part of being a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 So if all our hearts and minds are composed, if you'll stand where you are, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for a reasonable amount of health and strength. That Lord, there have been some hard days. But Lord, some kind of way you just seem to make things a little bit better. We ask you now to keep a hedge around us. To keep us in perfect peace. Lord God, 
watch over and keep those families that we called out this morning who are dealing with bereavement. Lord, strengthen them in the days to come. Let them know that, Lord, you don't make any mistakes. Now, God, we ask that you bless the gifts that will be brought this morning for the furtherance of your kingdom. That, Lord, you take it and multiply it farther than it could ever go on its own. And we'll care for this morning to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. For you alone are worthy. That, Lord God, as we depart from this place, Father God, give us traveling grace. As those that are viewing virtually leave the virtual platform, Lord God, let them find everything decent and in order. Lord, when we make our destinations and we turn the knob, meet us on the other side of the door. Embrace us with your everlasting love. We thank you this morning for grace and mercy. We thank you this morning for allowing us to come into this place one more time. And as this week unfolds, we don't know what it bears, but we know the one who holds the future in his hands. And we turn it all over to you. Just have your way. Have your way, Lord God, in each of our lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. And all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Tell somebody you're happy to see them and you love them this morning.